Delicious slow braised stuffed lamb breast. One of the secrets to slow cooking is to be robust and really get stuck in. Big, bold flavors work brilliantly well. So don't be precious. This is gutsy cooking at its absolute best. These are lamb breasts, a beautiful cheap cut, and it's sort of tucked alongside the rib. They've been boned out, the skin has been taken off. I'm gonna roll them, stuff them, and braise them. Braising simply means cooking in liquid on a low heat, making the meat divinely tender. Now, open them up and give them a really good season. Season them both sides, inside and out. Really important. It doesn't look like a real weighty, dense cut of meat, but once it's beautifully slow braised, it's just like melting lamb. It's incredible. I'm going to season the breast with some dried oregano. Put a heat in there, some chili flakes. Lemon zest. Put some amazing salted anchovies in there now. They almost melt inside the lamb. So the balance of flavors work beautifully. Now, pull it down towards you and roll that nice and tightly. That's what I'm looking for. String. We just need to tie them three times. One at each end and one in the middle. I fell in love with this dish years ago when I first started working in Paris because we had all the lamb in from the Pyrenees. The nice thing is, they can be done the day before. Pan on, olive oil in. Get that oil nice and hot. Lamb in. It's really important to get some nice color on there. Whilst they're browning, slice the onion. The lamb's gonna be cooking for two and a half hours. So don't slice the onions too thinly, otherwise they'll burn. Garlic and leave whole. Got the color on them. Look at that. Beautiful. Take them out. Onions in and garlic, straight in, lovely. That's the secret about slow braising. You never change pans. Why? All the goodness is in that one pan. A few chili seeds in there. Oregano, nice pinch. A little bit of lemon in there. I'm gonna do to the onions what I did to the lamb. Next, my capers. Fry them off. Get them exploding in the bottom of the pan. They get nice and crispy. Next, my black olives. Now, white wine. Mmm, bring that up to the boil. Deglazing the pan as well. A rinse in the bottom of that pan. And now the flavor in there is just extraordinary. Now, we add our tomatoes. It's puncher those plum tomatoes. Then simply place the lamb breast back in the pot and remember to taste. Mm. That's nice. Lid on. Into the oven. 170. Two, two and a half hours and forget about it. Oh, beautiful. All that has reduced down to this amazing, nice tomato sauce. And the lamb has kept its colour. Look at that. It's braised beautifully. Very carefully, get your little bits there. Slice off, pull off the little bits of string. This is why I get really excited. The secret is not to slice it too thinly. You can smell the lemon. It's hard to believe when you slice through the center there that that is a very cheap cut of meat. I'm salivating. I love this. I mean, it's just incredible. Pick up the tomatoes and the olives and the onions. An amazing, rich sauce. Take your lamp and sort of just sit it on. It looks incredible. And that, for me, is why chefs get so excited with cheap cuts, because the end results are incredible. Delicious breast of lamb with lemon, anchovies, chili and oregano. 
devilishly indulgent dessert. Nothing beats a great cake, a sort of a show-off trophy for party foods. So I'm going to make the most amazing flourless chocolate cake, but with a twist. First thing first, make the caramel. Flatten the sugar. Never stir a caramel, rule number one. Now keep the pan nice and flat. I'm going to flavour this caramel with a little bit of mint. Give it a little chop. Sprinkle that into the caramel. Don't get the caramel too dark, just nice and light. A little teaspoon of oil onto the tray and rub that in. And then pour out your caramel. If I was making a caramel sauce, then I'd put butter and cream into the caramel. But I want this nice minted brittle running through my cake. Whilst the caramel cools down on the tray, I'm going to make my cake. First, melt good quality dark chocolate in a bain-marie. Heating it directly in the pan would destroy the cocoa fats. Always in a bowl over boiling water. In a mixing bowl, sugar, two whole eggs and three egg yolks. Whisk until beautifully light and creamy and the colour changes to a light yellow. The more you mix the eggs and the sugar, the lighter that texture in the centre of the chocolate cake. Next, melt some butter into your warm, dark chocolate and stir. Puts that really nice sheen, velvety, rich and tasting amazing. Add that to your sugar and your eggs. Mm. Now give that a really good mix. And when you're making flourless desserts, it really is important to work hard at incorporating air, especially with the yolks and the sugar. That natural height needs to take place at the beginning. Look at that. Looks like the perfect chocolate ganache. Then separate four egg whites into a bowl. Now, make sure you've got two-thirds of the way there with your whites, and then just sprinkle in your sugar. It's almost like a meringue. And the firmer you make these now, the more it will elevate your cake in the oven. That's what you call a stiff peak. In with the whites. Before I start mixing that, I'm going to get my caramel. Just start breaking that up. It's like little glass, sheets of glass. Beautiful. Save some of your minty caramel shards for decoration and use a rolling pin to break up the rest into small pieces. Sprinkle that in. So as we start to slice that chocolate cake, you'll come across that nice crunch. Take your cake tin. Make sure it's lined with the grease with paper on the bottom. Nicely greased. Pour this in. Mm. A few sharp taps on a hard surface will rid your cake mixture of any air pockets that could create holes in your cake. Sit that in the oven. 180. After 35 minutes, my chocolate mint cake is cooked. And whilst it cools down, I can whip up a peppermint cream topping. Add sifted icing sugar and a few drops of peppermint extract to double cream and whisk until it's just holding its shape. Spoon your minty cream on top of the cake, leaving a small border free to make it easier to cut. For a cake that can't fail to attract attention at your party, scatter over the remaining caramel mint shards. We've got aromatic lean lamb chops with char-grilled broccoli and bulgur wheat salad. For dessert, it's healthy mango sundae. Holly! Darling, you gonna help Daddy with the dessert? Yes, please. And the lamb cutlets. Now, we all know that you love desserts. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> we'll do a little yoghurt parfait with some macerated fruits. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to take a tablespoon of icy sugar, dust that over the fruits. Good. Now... Is that enough? Or... That's perfect, darling. Thank you. Zest the orange over the fruits. And what's going to happen now is it's going to start to sort of marinate. I'm going to put some basil in there. That'll make it really flavoursome. Fresh basil in. And then we need to give that a little mix-up. I'm going to squeeze some fresh orange juice in there, nice and gently. OK. How gorgeous do those berries look now? Very. So we just leave them to marinate, OK? And that's what we call macerated berries. Now for the mango sundae. Right, mangoes in, please. 
I love mangoes. Nice. Now they're naturally sweet, okay? On. Oh, that smells incredible. Now, how fresh does that smell? Very. Now, you love art, right? Yeah, I do. So you're going to put these together. So a nice little dollop of mango at the bottom, nice and slowly. Once each glass has a layer of mango puree at the bottom, spoon over a layer of thick natural yoghurt and alternate until the glass is full. Well done. Now, they look yummy. from there, you get your berries. You sit your berries on top. They taste so fresh. But now they've been marinated and mm. the berries have been slightly macerated. And then finally, look, get your ice and sugar and just tap on top. They look it's beautiful. <laughs> now, they sit in the fridge to get nice and chilled, OK? So, if I take three and promise not to sneeze, and you take one and open the fridge door, good job. Dessert's chilling in the fridge. Now for the super simple main course. To go with the aromatic lamb chops, a tasty char-grilled broccoli and bulgur wheat salad. To cook the bulgur wheat, just simmer until tender, then drain. To give the broccoli a char-grilled flavour, simply cook with salt in a hot, dry pan until smoky and tender. For a quick and easy aromatic dressing, mix together harissa paste with either buttermilk or creme fraiche and add chopped mint. Simple as that. To serve, thoroughly dress your broccoli and bulgur wheat and finish with more fresh mint leaves. Dessert ready and salad's done. Now for the aromatic grilled lamb chops. How much do you love lamb holes? A lot. A lot. On a scale of one to ten? Ten. OK, these lamb chops are going to be delicious. First, we're going to marinate them. I'll start putting the spices in. Yeah. First one. Coriander. Coriander, good. So, teaspoon of coriander seeds in. A little touch of... What's that? Cumin. Cumin, well done. Cumin. In. One of Daddy's favourites. Turmeric. Turmeric. A teaspoon of that in there. Now, a little touch of salt. And then I want you to start grinding that down while I get the ginger and the garlic. Give that a nice little mix, please, for Daddy. That looks amazing. After that, get the garlic, lay it flat. And look, it almost purees the garlic, so we get a nice paste. See that underneath? Sorry about dirtying your nails. It's OK. I'll just smell of garlic now. Nothing wrong with that. The more you smell of garlic, the less the boys are going to date you. Sorry? Right, now the ginger makes it sort of spicy and fruity. Now, get the ginger and do exactly the same with the ginger. When you grate it like this, it turns into the most amazing ginger puree. Off you go, darling. Come on, Holly, put some muscle into it. Good girl. Nice. See all that there? You get the back of the knife. Now, I'm going to drizzle some olive oil in there, OK? And you bring that together as a paste for Daddy. There you go. Go on, then. stuck on. No, it'll come off. Nice. Good girl. Now, that smells incredible. That is a delicious paste. So I'm going to tip all that marinade on to the lamb. And then I want you to rub it all in to those lamb chops. In we go. Get your hands in there, my girl. Come on, holes. So look, you get them in there and you rub all that marinade. The flavour inside these chops. Come on, Holly. Where'd you find jumper? Come on. Your jumper's fine. Just mm. smell that. Mm, nice. It's so fresh. And the earlier you do this, the better. The turmeric is starting to stain the lamb chops. They're not even cooked yet, yet they smell delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you like, honestly? Oh, my nails. Oh, my nails. 
delicious after marinating from 10 minutes to overnight. But if you can't wait to get your hands on them, you can grill the chops straight away. Gas nice and high. And grilling them is going to make them slightly healthier. So, lamb on. First one in. We'll slide that in alongside. Is that so you fit more in the pan? That's right. What I want to do is get those really nice grill marks on there. See? On. Now we're going to cook them three sides. One side up, flip it, and then on the back. See this bit here? Yeah. We're going to grill it on there as well. Now, if you could get the yogurt out of the fridge, yeah. please, darling. Nice. Some fresh mint. I want you to pick the mint, please, and give it a little chop and mix it in with the yogurt. Smells amazing. Doesn't it? So, yogurt in. Chop up the mint, please. Have a look at the colour of the lamb. Look at that. Beautiful. That so nice. Does it? How nice are they? They smell incredible. Grilling them this way, they cook so much quicker. OK, it's a lot healthier. Smell those. Mmm. Mm. Beautiful. Excited? Yes, very. Good. I reckon Megan will like those. I hope so. See what I'm doing? I'm standing the chops up. Yeah. They were not going to dry out this way. Is that chopped enough? Chopped. Or a bit more? That's fine. And then mix it into the yoghurt, please, darling. This isn't too hard, is it, Dad? Not at all, my darling. How would you know when they're done? Nice and pink. Three and a half to four minutes each side. Medium. Six minutes. Well done. Eight or nine minutes. How would you like your lamb, my darling? Medium rare. Medium rare? That's what I always go for. A lamb cutlet at its best would be medium red. Off with the gas. OK? It's got a lovely, lovely flavour. OK? Look at that. Wow. I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'll carry the lamb and the yoghurt. If you get the bowl of wheat and the broccoli there, darling. That smells incredible. It really does. Fast and easy to make, packed with goodness and utterly delicious. With a bit of kitchen know-how, you have my ultimate healthy dinner on the table in just 30 minutes.